and welcome to another wealthmanagement.com RPA Fast Chat. I'm Fred Barstein, contributing editor at wealthmanagement.com. Today, we are talking with Gary Hankersley, head of sales and distribution at John Hancock Retirement. So welcome, Gary. Hey, thanks, Fred. Great to see you. Good to see you. So we could be on the precipice of an explosion of small and startup plans, you know, fueled by Secure 2.0, the state mandates, and facilitated, you know, by PEPs and those kinds of group plans. Um, what's your take on that? And do you think it's really going to happen? Uh, we're going to see an explosion? Yeah, so uh, to use the metaphor of an explosion, it takes two things, right? Fuel and then an ignition source. I think Secure... Uh, Secure 2.0 really uh, produces the fuel. I think the spark, though, is really the state mandates, as you, as you kind of alluded to. There are 14 states that already have a state mandate in place. There's at least 15 more that are considering one in some, you know, some uh, shape, form, or fashion on that continuum. And yes, we're already seeing the impact of that uh, through 2022 and then up to a fast start in 2023. So why should a, an advisor, whether they're a retirement plan advisor, specialist, or even um, someone just does a few plans a year. Why should they be attracted to this small and startup plan? You know, it's not always uh, the initial plan revenue uh, that would um, attract them to it. Yeah, because I think this is the, the million dollar question, right? And uh, we've been talking about this for the 28 years that I've been in the business. And the answer really stays the same. I think about the retirement plan space is really a, it's an opportunity to go on offense, to gain new clients, or it's a way to defend defend something that you already have. So for example, if you have a business owner's wealth management today, you don't want someone else coming in behind you and picking up the 401k plan and then stepping into the wealth management next. Conversely, if you don't have the wealth management assets um, and somebody else does, it's a great entree into that relationship. Same thing could be said if you're a property casualty firm, if you're a group benefit shop, it's always been about offense and defense, whether you're protecting something you already have in relationship or you're trying to gain access to a new one. So I think it's, this is a great opportunity for all of those types of conversations. So, Gary, how should advisors be taking advantage what, of what seems like a huge opportunity in the next, you know, three to five years? Yes, yeah, a great question, Fred. So at the end of the day, you want to work with partners that offer you a predictable, repeatable, positive experience. You know, John Hancock, we have a, a scaled, proven platform. We've been doing small plans on for, you know, over 40 years. Um, you know, at the end of the day, as you're, as you're thinking about the prospects that uh, that you have access to, whether it's something that's a business owner that's bringing an opportunity to you, or if you're actually specifically targeting a certain industry, then maybe you already have some business owner contacts in the construction industry, for uh, for example. You want to think about what is it those, those industries care about? What are the common denominators? And a big one of those things to pay attention to is really the type of payroll company that they're working with. Because really the efficiency of this operation and eliminating friction is really about payroll integration and having a really uh, easy uh, process that the employer can take advantage of. Again, a great benefit to offer to their employees. You know, at, and at the end of the day, too, I, like I said a moment ago, you want to work with the record keeper or partners. You know, I would I would bring a great uh, TPA to the table. They're going to allow you to bring the, the plan design expertise. Um, you know, to cover almost any situation. They've seen it before. You know, probably a thousand times. Again, work with the right partners from a record keeping standpoint, understand your value proposition and really help enable it. enable it. If it's retail wealth management that you want, figure out how do you leverage the tools and resources that they have that allow you to do that. So John Hancock, for example, is part of our onboarding experience. We can customize and work with you to really showcase your value with that uh, with those employees of that company. Or if you want us to handle it, then we'll handle it. So that's just a couple of examples of things I would be paying attention to if I were an advisor getting to consider getting into this space. So the key is find the right partners, outsource as much as you can to make yours and focus on the opportunities, the wealth management opportunities, maybe some of the benefit opportunities as well. I think that's it. Great. Well, Gary, thanks for your time today. It's very insightful. Uh, congratulations on all of John Hancock's success and uh, hopefully we'll be looking back in three to five years and saying, wow, we really took advantage of these opportunities because as I say, either you're going to take advantage of it, you're going to get run over by it, or you're just going to you know, be absent. And I think that advisors should really be looking at this opportunity because it's, 
it's something we've never seen before. I, I heard someone say the other day that they expect there could be as many as 900,000 opportunities. Yeah. I mean, today there's 300, there's 700,000 or so DC plans, and there's five or 6 million companies that are maybe going to be affected by mandates or have access to the secure 2.0, $5,000 tax credit. Exactly. Great. Well, thank you for, thank you for watching uh, Fast Chat, the uh, Wealth Management RPA Fast Chat. And we look forward to seeing you again on other episodes. Thanks, Fred. Thank you, Gary.